Hello everyone, and is Aaron Flutter here, and I am doing a follow-up to my original Archer and Olive Ambassador video. Um, so I have some questions here that you all have asked me uh, on my Instagram stories and on that video. So I'm going to go ahead and answer to the best of my ability those questions. Um, the first one is, what if you have two Instagram pages, one art and one bullet journal? Do you I need to apply once or twice. You would only apply once, um, but you would also link both of those accounts that you have. Um, I, I don't know how it's set up on the form that they have for the application, but I would just put like a semicolon and let them know that you do have two accounts because um, that will definitely um, be of interest to them if you have multiple accounts for bullet journaling and for art, meaning you reach multiple niches. The next one is, if I don't do bullet journaling, but I use my Archer and Olive journals as sketchbooks, am I a good fit? And of course, um, so Archer and Olive definitely is looking for a variety of people. There are people on the current ambassador team that are not bullet journalers. There are people that are letterers, that are, there are people that are mostly art doodling, so they don't do the typical bullet journaling. But if you're using Archer and Olive Supplies and you are reaching those certain niches, um, that is always something Archer and Olive will look for. They want a variety of folks um, in their program. The next one are, what are your posting commitments and are there other requirements? Um, so I touched on this in the first video. So there are a few requirements when it comes to being an ambassador. Um, for posting, you do have to have four posts a month that feature Archer and Olive um, products. If that hasn't changed, um, I, I believe when I saw the actual um, the actual application, it also mentioned four. Uh, you also have to be able to create content for them each month. Like I mentioned before, you have to do a blog and a video each month, and um, depending on the month, you may also have to do a reel. So you definitely need to be able to produce content each month when it comes to that. Um, and if they're sending you products, um, subscription box, whatnot, um, they also want you to uh, showcase those items in your feed, in your stories, um, on your social media platforms. The next one is, what if you don't yet have a social media presence? So they do not require any minimum number of followers, if that's what you mean by social media presence. If you don't have a social media account, that's going to be a problem um, because an ambassador is someone that is showcasing products. And if you don't have anywhere to showcase the products, that will be a problem. Um, but they do not have a minimum requirement when it comes to the number of followers or anything like that. So um, it it's more of um you using the products you being able to showcase the products and um how in tune you are with your um social media presence like your followers um if you have 300 quality followers that like are really engaged with you and things like that versus someone that has a hundred thousand followers but only has like three people engage with them your more valuable than the 100,000 followers, if that makes sense. So it's really about you creating the, a community more than um, just the sheer number of followers you have, because to be honest, people buy that all the time. So um, do you have to live in the US to apply? No, we have plenty of people on the current um, on the current ambassador team that are not uh, US only. In fact, one of the people that runs the um, the ambassador program is not US based. So you do not have to be US. How detailed should the Google form responses be? Um, I would say don't write paragraphs and paragraphs for each question, but make sure you sufficiently answer the question. If they're asking, what is your style? You don't have to go into depth about like, um, I am eclectic because I do blank, 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 and blank, or I am a strictly functional planner. Um, I am using pen and notebook only, blah, blah, blah. 
you just really need to like kind of give the keywords there. You don't need to like put a paragraph for what you mean by I'm eclectic or a paragraph about what you mean by earthy, right? Like people will understand um, in Archer and Olive what you mean by, oh, I have an earthy vibe. Um, how much should this, does a team get to help with working on new products and collections? Um, very limitedly, they are more of the content team. So you are producing content, not necessarily the products. Um, there are folks in the past for the ambassadors that have produced products. Um, I don't know what sort of team thing that they'll do this year, but for the last couple teams, um, they did design pens or pins, pins, enamel pins, um, so they did design those products, uh, but the day-to-day -day releases, um, not the, there is no input. They are told in advance, um, but they do not give any input that way. There are times that the Archer and Olive folks will message and say, hey, if you were to get this type of pen, um, what size would you want? Or, or something to that effect. So there, there is, times where they'll engage you to help with products, but designing them um, is not often uh, from the ambassador team. And that's, I think, and this is just my thought process is, I think that's why they changed from the term design team to the ambassador team, um, because there is limited design elements in that position. Uh, does the video have to be in English or can it be in any other language? Um, to be honest, I'm not sure. I know that the folks at Arch and Olive are primarily English speaking, so I think that would assist. Um, but what I would do if I were you is I would kind of do both. Um, I would mix in both of the languages. If you're able to speak primarily English, um, that would help them just to be able to get the information that they want to get out of the video um, because they are primarily English speaking. But if you also showcase that um, you speak other languages, I don't think that would hurt, to be honest with you. Um, the next question is, do you have to have lots of followers and social media accounts? Um, I kind of touched on this before. You don't have to have a lot of social media accounts. Um, having them in a variety of places is helpful. If you have a TikTok, a Instagram, Facebook, um, Wherever like your social media presence is heaviest, I would definitely put that information first and foremost. Um, like I have a Facebook, but I don't use Facebook at all. Um, it's not a platform I enjoy um, and it's not something that I engage in um, heavily. So I do have one, um, but I don't use it. So definitely put the accounts that you are primary in first. Um, if you have your own blog, for example, maybe you get a ton of engagement out of your blog, but you're not as heavily presenced on Instagram. So put your blog information um, ahead of that when it comes to giving any sort of numbers and engagements and things like that. Um, the next one is, if I don't have a public Instagram account, would I need one to, or would I need to make one if selected? Um, I would say, and again, I'm not speaking for Archer and Olive, but out of my experience, I would say that your account does need to be public. Um, if you make a new account that's public versus your old account that is private, um, you're not going to have any sort of engagement on that new account. So personally, what I would do is I would make my the account that you currently have public and if you do want to have private things, then make a private um, account and then like go in and archive any photos from the other one because you cannot see archived photos on your feed. So I would archive anything that you don't want to be seen um, to the public. So that's personally what I would do. Um, but I would imagine that having a public facing profile is important as an ambassador. Um, no questions, just thanks for your last video. You're welcome. <laughs> and what's your favorite thing about being an ambassador? So honestly, um, 
One of my favorite things is one, obviously getting to know things ahead of time. I, I really, really enjoy that. Um, not only do you get paid, but you also get gift cards every month so that you can um, purchase products that you aren't being given. Um, I kind of my favorite thing about the ambassador program, again, I, I really like knowing things ahead of time. Um, I, I'm not a person that like secrets. So I like knowing things, but for me, it's really, um, getting to feel involved in a team, um, and getting to feel involved with a company that I care about and being able to speak for a company that I care about. So that's one of the things that I really, really enjoy. Um, I am a content making machine, so I, I don't mind making the content. It's probably not my favorite aspect of being on the team. Um, but it is something that is interesting because I get to find out what are things that, uh, you all are interested in and make blogs and videos and things, um, to address those types of things. Um, honestly, I know this is not something that the community loves so much, but when you get to sneak the Archer and Olive subscription box items, that's one of my favorite things because it's kind of a game. And like, you know, I'll look online to see if people are like kind of guessing towards the right way. And then I'll like kind of structure my hints a little bit to make them, um, to make them more clear so that folks can guess the item. I do like that game, but I, I also want to get a, the most amount of information out so that people can make, um, educated guesses on if they are willing to spend the money on the subscription box. So honestly, the the game for the subscription box was a lot of fun for me. It, it is super fun to engage with people um, and have them like guessing in my uh, in comments on my stories and seeing the conversation and how it goes online and um, trying to structure my sneak peeks so that they are um, they are more clear for people that are trying to guess online. So that's one of my personal favorite things. So those are all the questions that I had. Again, let me know if you have any more questions below. I will try to answer them in the comments um, because this is the last video I'm going to make on the ambassador program since I think the uh, applications are due by the end of June. So that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye everyone.